Anyone seen any sand cats around here? Okay. Our species spotlight this week is on sand cats. And believe it or not, that is their real name. People always say, what, what are they called? Yeah, they live in the sand, but that's their name. They're actually sand cats. And their, their scientific name is Felis Margarita. Don't ask me why. They're a very small cat. They're found in northern Africa. They're found in parts of the Middle East. And believe it or not, they're actually found a little further north up into Asia. They're found in Pakistan and some of the countries surrounding Pakistan. And they're one of the smallest cats, and they are actually, they're not a domestic cat. A lot of times people will ask us on our tour, are they young, are they babies? And they're not. They're full grown at just a few pounds. And they're very well adapted to live in the desert. They have padding on the bottom of their feet. They have huge ears so they can hear their prey. They eat a lot of lizards, gerbils, rodents that live in the sand. And they actually listen for them scurrying across the top of the sand. Believe it or not, sand cats even live in places where there's snow. So that may help them to keep their feet warm. Uh, really just a, an adaptation to help these guys live where there's temperature extremes. So that's Canyon in the tube and he is our male sand cat here at the sanctuary. I think he's going to try to sneak out right back there. But you can see his size. He's pretty small. He probably only weighs about five pounds or so. And the places that they do live, the, the animals that might eat a sand cat would be bigger cats like caracals or domestic dogs where there's more people in the area, maybe wolves, uh, even foxes. And these guys are small enough that birds of prey could actually go after them as well. What they eat, they eat anything from grasshoppers, insects, of course the ones that live in the desert, a lot of times they would be eating lizards primarily as their diet, and, and definitely rodents. That's probably makes up the biggest part of their diet. The rodents, uh, gerbils, desert rats, things like that. These guys don't have access to water, in the desert area, so a lot of times they will get their moisture, they'll get their, their liquid intake from their prey. So they will consume the body fluids of the animals that they eat and that will be their liquid intake. And if you really, if you think about it, what kind of immune system do you need to live in the desert in these areas? So they are susceptible to a lot of the, a lot of the diseases that other cats would have. They're not the most hardy animals. We do have a pair at the sanctuary, we have a male and a female, and they are doing very well very healthy, very hardy, but for the most part they don't live a long time in captivity. So with the sand cats, the sad thing about smaller cats like the sand cats and some of the, the lesser known cats is they're disappearing at an alarming rate and most people don't even know what a sand cat is, let alone how you can protect the species. And when you think about the bigger picture, really we need to preserve habitat and when you preserve habitat for the bigger animals, that in turn protects a lot of the smaller animals like sand cats. And they have a very vital part uh, in nature and they take care of the rodent problem and they fill, they fill a void where there's no other predators, at least smaller predators, in these desert areas, in these remote areas. So believe it or not, the sand cats are very important.